All right, let's talk a little bit about Cubane. And our background of choice today is a AI's perspective on Cubane. So hope you enjoy that. Uh, today we'll talk about where we've been, uh, you know, what happened, where are we going, uh, where are we at right now. Uh, because I have not posted a video on Cubane in quite a while, yet I've been at it pretty much every day. Uh, so I haven't posted a video of the deep protection because basically all it entails is, uh, you know, taking that brown solid uh, and putting it in sulfuric acid and watching it completely tar. Um, so what I did was uh, originally I was using you know, just drain cleaner, which probably isn't the best idea. So what I did was distill it over and it distills at 330 degrees Celsius. So it's extremely terrifying. Uh, and I broke my condenser, uh, even, even just air cooling my condenser. I was not using water, uh, and it broke on the receiving side too. Uh, very weird. And the vacuum takeoff adapter got fused, uh, inside of that condenser. So, that was a little bit of a delay. I had to order a new condenser. Uh, I also made a mistake when making the second key towel run. Uh, I put my sulfuric acid in the mixture first, uh, so it just completely attacked and destroyed our cyclopentanone. Uh, in the meantime, I discovered that Amazon, uh, of all places, sells PTSA. So I went ahead and purchased some of that, and that'll be here very soon. And what I'm going to be doing is uh, just being a lot more careful about that ketal process um, and using that PTSA instead of the sulfuric acid. We'll just completely take that out of the equation. Uh, you know, I, I, I love sticking with the hardware store motive, uh, however... Once you get to that deprotection phase, if there are any impurities uh, in that in that mixture at all, uh, the sulfuric acid will destroy it, and basically tar will just form around there. So what I did was I, I deprotected and it tarred, and I still washed it with ethyl acetate, recrystallized, and you know per the paper I did all that purification, and I did get crystals. However, they were surrounded by tar. Uh, so it's completely unusable. You, you can't just put that in a flow reactor. Um, so we need to be a lot more careful about our ketal. So currently what I'm doing is I am making cyclopentanone uh, with about 500 grams of dipic acid. So however much that yields, you know, maybe 200 mils or so. And then uh, what I'll be doing when the PTSA gets in, I'm going to be doing a... Uh, you know, molar scale of the cyclopentanone. So I'm going to be using one mole of cyclopentanone, or about 85 mils, um, which is, you know, just 15 mils less than the paper that I'm following uses. So we'll be following the paper pretty closely this time um, and just being a lot more careful about it. Uh, so I've made several adjustments to the vacuum pump. I've added gauges, I've added uh, valves, I've added all sorts of things to make sure that when we're pulling that uh, that key towel over, it's at a very static atmosphere. So let's talk about safety a little bit with this uh, deprotection uh, debacle. Uh, so when I went to do the deprotection, I used uh, just regular drain cl drain cleaner, uh, sulfuric acid. Um, that wasn't a good decision, uh, in my opinion. Um, it's it just contains inhibitors. It contains too many impurities. So I decided that I needed to purify it and. Uh, against my better judgment, uh, I went, you know, as much as I didn't want to, I went and distilled the sulfuric acid to purify it. Uh, now, for those of you who don't know, uh, sulfuric acid distills over at 330 degrees Celsius, which is close to that of the melting point of lead. So if you could imagine, you know, molten lead, uh, however, it's it's not lead, it's sulfuric acid, uh, it can do serious damage. Uh, you're talking fourth degree burns uh, to anywhere that you would get it on your body uh, at that point gloves do not matter but that's truly all you're really going to get there's not much of an escape if something goes wrong so this is not something that you would want to happen 
while you're distilling sulfuric acid at 330 degrees Celsius. Uh, so I guess my talking point here is don't get into any type of procedure that you don't entirely feel comfortable with or you know you're having second thoughts about. My second thoughts were that uh, you know, specifically that I had cheap glass, and that proved to be correct here. Uh, you know, this is not very thick. Uh, it's just Vivor glass, uh, you know, not the best. So what I've done is uh, upgraded my glass, started to upgrade to some of the bigger name brands of glass just to make sure that everything is, is nice and safe. Um, the second thing that I did, uh, you know, because I was so nervous about this, uh, and I, I should have done this whether I was nervous or not, uh, I had a fully stocked safety cart right next to, uh, you know, where I was doing the reaction. I had the area set up for what I was doing. So even though that catastrophic failure occurred, I wasn't damaged. I didn't damage anything that I didn't want to get damaged. Uh, everything that was there to take the damage took the damage and nothing else. So it's extremely important to be prepared for whatever you're getting yourself into. And if you're having any second thoughts at all, especially with such a dangerous procedure like that, just don't do it. Uh, what I'm going to be doing going forward is just buying uh, ACS grade sulfuric acid. Um, it's easy to get in the States. Uh, it's not that expensive. The, the cost is worth it. Um, I really just don't want to be doing that. Uh, it's it's too, too high of a temperature, and you can still get better quality stuff by just buying it rather than trying to purify it yourself. So that would be the biggest thing uh, going forward uh, with the Cubane synthesis. You know, I'm going to keep trucking on forward uh, at a nice, reasonable pace. Uh, you should see videos coming out on that soon. I will do a like a recap video of you know me doing this whole process again and what I've changed uh, and how I'm making it better. Um, so watch out for that video and also you know the videos after that obviously we'll be doing the flow reaction. We'll be doing all of that. So as, as far as I currently know, there are currently two people attempting the synthesis, uh, which would be myself and uh, Tom from Explosions and Fire. Uh, one thing that was common between those two, uh, you know, attempts, even though we had slightly different attempts, was our Deals Alder product, the, the brown solid, we both got terrible yields. So that's what I'm currently investigating. You know, I should have gotten 30 to 35 grams and I got one. And then I tried it again off camera and I got half a gram. So that's, that's cause for an investigation there. Uh, so we'll go ahead and be a lot more careful about our uh, starting materials and make sure everything's nice and pure to uh, reduce the impurities so when we uh, add that sulfuric acid it doesn't just get completely murdered. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to have some good findings and share it with the community. Uh, you know, I know other people are interested in doing this reaction. I know uh, Thai Labs has a uh, what he calls mega scale Q vein coming up. Uh, I'm very excited for that. Um, so I know that you know, the community is kind of watching one another and, uh, you know, working together on this, which is really cool to see, uh, you know, there's no unfriendly competition going on or anything like that. Uh, everybody's just one big happy family. So look out for future Cubane videos coming out soon. I'm sure those are going to be great. Uh, I'm sure you guys will be excited about what we're doing uh, after Cubane. Um, if you'd like to find that out early, uh, I have a new Patreon account set up. For now, uh, the at least the updates between videos are viewable to the public, so you don't need to be a Patreon to see that. Uh, but if you'd like to uh, know what I'm doing in the future and have the power to vote on that content, uh, that is exclusive to Patreons. So I'm very, very grateful for anyone and everyone who's willing to support the research. Things are looking really great. Uh, it's something very small that you can do to help out is like the video. Uh, feel free to subscribe if you'd like to follow along, and we'll see you guys later.